still on a uh, one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, interview with w Professor Wale Shrinka, and we've talked about many things, but I want to carry on from where we left off, uh, looking at the humanity or the inhumane uh, dispositions of, of people in Nigeria. So I just want to take it from there. Um, you talked of various things. You looked at government, you looked at people at large, and, and the fact that people seem to get dissipated, you know, in their passions to see justice done. Mm -hmm. And maybe you share some sympathy for them in the sense that with all these things happening and not really seeing enough progress in any, any area, you can understand why people get fatigued. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm not, uh, it's, the situation is not as bleak as that. The fact is that there's so much debris to be cleared to begin with. Um, let's give credit where credit is due. Um, for instance, I am in total uh, sympathy with our military. I'm talking about our soldiers. Okay. I know what they are confronting, you know, with Boko Haram, the ISWAP, and now recently, the cattle uh, 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 maniacs, uh, and we know what losses they're taking all the time. Okay. Just uh, let me ask, did you see the videos um, with the general, Adeni, I think is his name, where he was lamenting, I don't know if you saw the recent videos that went viral, mm. and he kept repeating, the men are not running, they're standing, they're facing, but the impression you got from that video was that they were overwhelmed by a Boko Haram who had um, military might that we didn't I, I anticipate that they had both in the air and they didn't seem at all cornered this Boko Haram that they were describing. Mm. If anything, the military were the ones, you know, having to beat a retreat almost. Um, yes. Oh, yes. Obviously, they had to beat a retreat. I mean, one must expect in engagements, military engagements, any commander who doesn't factor in the possibility and the eventual need of retreat at the right time, and who doesn't factor in losses, he's not a true soldier, he's just an optimist. And so we must expect it. But when well, one is shattered at the same time, um, when losses on this level are encountered, and especially you, uh, if you're a creature of imagination, as I am, in which I actually project, actually can see these scenes uh, visibly, literally, almost as if I'm there. You know? So some of us, you know, it, it impinges on our consciousness, maybe a bit deeper than, uh, than others. And I mean uh, permit me to ask, though, because I'm still asking the question in my head. Yes. Why are Boko Haram in such a position of strength after so many years? Yes. Okay. One of the, um, I think one of the commencing errors, you see, there's always a critical time, you know, just as with um, the virus, this uh, COVID, uh, there's, a, there's a critical moment. You miss that moment, you're in trouble. You know, all crises of humanity, you'll find that you can trace it backwards to a moment missed. And we missed it. And that happened many years ago. And I can, and I, I don't want to mention governments because people always say, well, Lushenka has it in for this particular government. No, I'm talking generally and very sincerely. Uh, it goes a long way back when we permitted, we cosseted, even indulged extremism. If you want, I would, I would even take it back to not even to uh, 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 the beheading of a Kaluka, uh, but even to that moment when, uh, I can't remember which came first now, but anyway, when a program and attitude of appeasement was undertaken by a president of this nation, when uh, Daniels, Miss Daniels, uh, the journalist for uh, one of the newspapers, made a statement, purely harmless statement, and they went on the rampage. The extremists said he'd in, she'd insulted Mohammed, started killing people right, left, and center, burnt down houses. What did that president do? He went on his knees to go and appease them. A fatwa was pronounced against that girl. The government of this nation did not say, ah, oh, wait a minute, my oath of office is to defend life to defend the rights, the fundamental rights, and in particular the life of the citizens under me. You don't pass a death sentence on anybody in this. Otherwise, I jail you. No, it didn't. Appeasement. It was appeasement right, left, and center. Now, bullies go back to the phenomenon of bullies. When bullies see that you're on your knees, they kick you. 
That's right. It's instinct of bullying. So these people saw that they could get the extremists, the fundamentalists. We're talking about Boko Haram extremism and ISWAP and so on. This is where it begins, not merely in Nigeria, but again, along certain other areas, not just the West Coast, but of the African continent. Now the fundamentalists were cosseted, they were, abused, they were appeased, and so they proceeded to abuse their appeasers. It's part, it's a part of the psychology of the bully. And so there's not much difference between taking up cudgels, attacking houses and killing, beheading people in the markets, and taking up AK-47s and going to Sambisa Forest. It's one simple step. Time to go on a quick break. When we return, we'll waste no time in picking up where we left off. You're watching One on One with Professor Wale Shoinka. Mm -hmm. 